if you had to pick the three best and three worst <laughs> Uh, drugs I'm not going to pick the three worst. That's a that's a tough list. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. But that, I, that's, I can that's tell the you, most yeah, okay. interesting part. So, what, what would you pick and why? What, what? All right. Um, so, so I think uh, one important thing to say is that we don't have much evidence in people, one way or the other, for any of these longevity uh, interventions. So, I think I think it would depend on. I have to put this in context. I think your question, my answer to your question, would depend on whether you're talking about in people or in laboratory studies. In so, laboratory studies, no question, caloric restriction and rapamycin. Those are the two that always work. Well, let me take that back. Rapamycin always works. Caloric restriction works about two thirds of the time, depending on the genetic background. Um, but in people, it's a different question, right? Because we don't have much much data. So. So I will I will give you the answer in people if that's what you want, but I will preface it by saying it's mostly speculative. Um, so in people, exercise number one, no question, that works. Uh, I'm not a big fan of caloric restriction, to be honest with you. I think being at a healthy weight, absolutely. Being bo- calorically restricting below that, I think in people, the side effects are going to outweigh the benefits. That's my own personal belief. And I think that the psychological side effects are way underappreciated of caloric restriction, along with some of these other variants of caloric restriction that are popular right now. So that, that's, that, that, that's kind of where I fall on caloric restriction. But I think being at a healthy weight is, is absolutely in the top couple. I would put rapamycin as the one, um, if you want to say non-lifestyle intervention, that I think has a pretty good chance of having an impact on the biology of aging in people. Uh, and I think has a pretty good chance of benefiting a lot of people. It's not going to, it's not going to help everybody. I don't think, but I think there are a lot of people where rapamycin could be quite beneficial if done properly. And that's important because we don't exactly know what the optimal way to dose rapamycin is, but I know a lot of people who have pretty compelling stories. So that, that's about all I can say. And that's what makes me believe it. Um, I'm not a big believer yet for much else in people. I think there are a whole set of things that I would put kind of at the next tier as more speculative, um, but, and also probably not going to hurt anybody, uh, cause I think that's important. So I would kind of put alpha ketoglutarate in that bin. Um, I would, I would put NAD precursors in that bin. I don't actually have a lot of faith in NAD precursors, but I don't think they're going to hurt anybody. So other than what it costs you, there is the economic side effect, <laughs> um, but, uh, but I don't think they're going to make anybody sick probably. Um, uh, you know, and then there's stuff out there that's just nonsense in my, in my view, or at least based on really, really bad science. And the top, um, th- the top three wars. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Resveratrol, resveratrol, resveratrol. <laughs> I knew that was the answer. <laughs> so tell us more about resveratrol and why. Well, so I think it's important to say, I'm not saying resveratrol can't have beneficial effects in people. Uh, the data in for lifespan and, and health span is pretty clear. The initial reports of resveratrol extending lifespan were wrong, haven't been reproducible. That paper should have been retracted a long, long time ago. That's just a fact. That's that's what the data say. Doesn't extend lifespan in mice. Multiple studies have shown that. Um, and if you look across all of the experiments that have ever been done with resveratrol in any model organism, the net effect is zero. There was a meta-analysis done. So, you know, in the longevity space, the data are pretty clear that it doesn't extend lifespan, probably doesn't extend health span. And I think one of the frustrations with a lot of people in the field is that hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent trying to fix the literature. And and the field, if you ask the scientists in the field, 90% of them are going to tell you we've moved on. This is not something that people pay attention to anymore. But unfortunately, it's very hard to clean up stuff like that. So, And it's very hard when some people keep talking about it um, and saying that you know it does all this stuff that it doesn't actually do. There is some evidence in people from the epidemiological literature, you know, it's mixed. You can find some evidence that it may have some some positive effects, you know, at very high doses for for certain diseases. I don't know whether that's true or not, but from the biology of aging, there's not much evidence that it really does anything. And there's a lot of evidence now accumulating that, that it probably doesn't. Hey. Would you like to know how to use food as medicine for your genes? 
get access to my free webinar using the link in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and if you do, please make sure to comment and share.